Hello traders, Gary Wagner here just about 11 o'clock in Honolulu, 5 o'clock in New York. It is Monday, July 24th, 2017 and this is the Daily Report for Gold and Silver. Muted activity this morning with precious metals trading modestly, fractionally higher on the day, dollar modestly, fractionally higher and a mixed bag in U.S. equities. Gold currently up between 40 cents and a dollar, trading roughly at 12.55. Muted range on the day as traders and market participants await the start of this month's FOMC meeting, which will begin tomorrow and conclude on Wednesday with a statement. Silver also trading higher on the day, 16.47. We currently have active and open long positions in both gold and silver. We'll talk about them in detail uh, during the technical studies portion of the show. So traders, it certainly seems as though we are going to begin this week on the quiet side. Gold is currently trading up about 60 cents on the day, 12.55.50. And after last week's dramatic rise, we're looking at a weekly chart, and this is the rise I'm talking about, in which we saw the market go approximately $30 to the upside. I would not be surprised to see a little bit of muted activity as we begin this week. We do have a couple of things we certainly want to keep an open ear and eye to. One of those things is to see what develops in this current administration's turmoil regarding the Russian investigation, how much that will really bog down the president from actually being able to accomplish some of his tasks. And then secondly, we do have this month's FOMC meeting that's scheduled to begin tomorrow and conclude on Wednesday with a statement. We certainly want to keep a close ear to what tone the Federal Reserve has in its statement. It has recently come out with a much more dovish stance than prior statements, and therefore it's certainly something we want to see whether or not that's still in alignment. Now, we are looking at a weekly chart, and on this weekly chart, I've got some real long-term trend lines, both support and resistance. In fact, let me go ahead and compress this chart. And as you can see, the resistance line is really coming in from the record all-time high at $1,900 per ounce back in 2011. We simply followed that along for these tops here and then carry that over. And what we can see is we are getting very, very close again to this upper level resistance. Now, I had a chart sent to me this morning by one of our subscribers. He tends to have a pretty good read on his technical analysis and his chart study. So I do look at the charts that he sends and what he pointed out this morning was the fact that we are getting relatively close to the upper level of this resistance line. Our support line is from these recent lows right here, so we've got a ways to go. We're certainly A, getting close to the apex, and B, we're certainly getting close to the upper levels of this resistance line. Now, one thing that we can say is that on prior occasions, hitting this particular resistance area here, these are the two double tops at 13. On both occasions at 13, that proved to be a area in which the market sold off. So the question is, with that in mind, if in fact this market does get close, and it certainly appears as though it's going to get closer to this particular resistance area, how will it react and will it come down once again or will we get a defined and clear breakout above that? Now, the key is, is that this market is being driven by fundamental factors and I can think of many fundamental factors that would cause an utter breakout above current resistance lines, but I can also think of an equal amount of events that would cause it to find resistance in this area and then track lower and stay within this channel. Because we have seen this market really track within this channel, and now the question is how it will react once it gets to the upper ends or bands of this particular resistance line. For that reason, we talked about on Friday the fact that I'm going to want to trail our stops up higher. We're simply looking for a valid place to put them that would protect us 
with any kind of intraday move, but at the same time allow us to make a profit should the market continue in our direction. But as I said on Friday, I will send out a special trade alert to that effect. Might not be today, I might need to wait another day to see how this market begins to work its way through the week. And traders, we are looking at a weekly silver chart. We just looked at our weekly gold chart. We had a tremendous upside surge last week. That's this particular candle. I draw your attention currently to the Fib retracement that I have up on the screen. Again, a longer term Fib retracement from these tops above 1850 to these lows just above $15. So a $3 range within them. This is our range right here. And the fact of the matter is a 61% retracement is precisely where silver is trading right now. So the question is, will we see both gold and silver maybe kick back or pull back over the next couple of days, or will we see an utter breakout to the upside breaking through current levels of resistance, of which we're fairly close in both gold and silver? That's something we'll have to see in terms of how it unfolds. In the meantime, my recommendation is to maintain your current long positions, maintain your stops. We effectively moved them up late last week, but we will look to tighten them over the next couple of days. In other markets that we follow, as I said, mixed bag in U.S. equities with the Dow Jones Industrial Average, as well as the Standard & Poor's closing off fractionally on the day. Interesting though, the NASDAQ Composite has closed at a new all-time record high, trading up about four-tenths of a percent, closing at 64.12. So traders in other markets that we follow, we're looking at the dollar. Dollar fractionally higher on the day. We're looking at a weekly chart. It is printing green, but only by a tick or two. And the real question is, is the fact of the matter that the dollar currently still trading at 93.82. And the question is whether this particular price point will provide some real headwinds that will keep the market below this price point and actually have a track to lower pricing. We've seen many occasions where the market will bounce a little bit below or above a current resistance area only to come back into alignment. But my sense is over time, even if we get some sort of a bounce in the dollar, it will probably track lower still through the summer. And then traders, in terms of U.S. equities, now we do have the Dow Jones Industrial as well as the Standard Poor's trading lower on the day. But lo and behold, the NASDAQ is trading up, up almost four tenths of a percent. This is our weekly chart here. And as you can see, we have closed at a new all-time record high in the NASDAQ Composite Index. I do believe we'll see the NASDAQ go higher. I also believe that we will see mixed moves in other equities, such as the Dow Jones and the S&Ps, as traders kind of balance their books and try to see where the turmoil in this current administration goes, whether or not they can turn that around. I think that that is going to have a tremendous effect on U.S. equities. Traders, absolutely no doubt about it. This week, there are events we have to keep our eye on. First event, FOMC meeting. Although there is really no perceived uh, announcement to come out in terms of a direct change in their current policy, market participants as well as traders and analysts are looking for the tone and timbre of the statements made to detect whether or not the tone is a little bit more bullish or dovish, I should say, or hawkish as that statement is read, the exact wording of that. Secondly, any announcement or any indication about asset liquidation of this four and a half trillion dollar portfolio that the Fed has amassed over the last 10 years, because to me, that is the wild card. Lastly, also what is happening with this current administration, the turmoil that currently exists about the Russian investigation, and the fact that this current administration is completely bogged down with the inability to pass meaningful policies. This has been Gary Wagner, wishing you as always good trading. We will talk to you tomorrow for another daily update and review. Bye-bye.